Okay, so we are ready to start uh, deployment now. Uh, and now that we know what the objectives are, uh, you can adjust your deployment plan accordingly if you are the villain. So uh, the first thing that's going to happen is uh, the villain is going to place their first uh, objective, which is their primary objective. Now, just for your reference, you're going through the tokens here. Um, oh, sorry. I'm trying to do this correctly. Okay. This is the primary objective. You can see it has the reverse pattern of the other objectives. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, deploy this uh, primary objective. And I'm going to stick this right there. Okay, so there we go with the primary objective. Now it goes to the hero. The hero uh, has to deploy his objectives uh, no closer than 9 inches from any other objective, uh, including your own. So it's important to note. So I'm going to put the hero's objective right there. Uh, we're going to go back and forth here. I'll place the enemy second objective there. The hero will uh, place their second objective. Well, let's see if I can put it uh, here. Oh, don't knock everything off the table while I'm doing that. There we go. Uh, make sure that they're at least nine inches apart. I don't even know if that's on camera anymore. It looks like it is. Okay. Um, and actually, let's draw. Yeah. Uh, then the uh, villain's going to place their, their last secondary objective, and they're going to place it. Um, they'll place it back here. Let's see if I can actually get it in camera. Uh, it's too... F well... That's actually okay. I think those are a, that's a, a nine nine inch triangle going there. Uh, and then the hero is going to do the same. You guys have to forgive me for my uh, my wonky camera angles here. So it's going to be there at the very bottom of the screen. Uh, let's make sure everything is nine inches apart. Which it is. Looks like it's all going to be nine inches apart. Perfect. Okay. So. There we go. Uh, all the objectives have been placed. Now the next uh, step is to deploy boosts. So uh, when I compare the starter sets, um, it turns out the black diamond uh, is uh, two points shy of where the shattered sword uh, starter is. Now I could have the shattered sword player remove a couple of models just to make up for it, but instead I'm going to take a boost just to show you. Uh, I'm going to take an Esper condenser here. So. Um, this may not necessarily be the Esper Condenser uh, in your boost pack, but I'm going to use this one as the Esper Condenser. Well, this camera doesn't focus very well, does it? <laughs> so um, there is no restriction to placing boosts. So I'm going to go ahead and place uh, this boost right here next to my primary objective. Uh, okay, and then we're going to move on to the next part of deployment, uh, which is deploying our unit. So uh, when you deploy units, it's just the unit cannot be within nine inches of an enemy objective. So um, what I normally do during a deployment here is I'll usually stick the cipher in first. And the reason why I put the cipher in first is because uh, the cipher is, uh, it's, it's basically unkillable. And so that way you can actually put it out more in the open um, and you can allow uh, the other you can allow your knight to have line of sight to your cipher. That doesn't look like that's going to work. So I'm going to put my cipher right there. It looks like that's nine inches away. Uh, the paladin player has the same opportunity. Uh, this time I'm going to put the cipher up here. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to alternate deployment, uh, go back and forth. A couple things to note. Let's go with uh, black diamond here real quick. Uh, the black diamond player is going to place uh, their troop here. Uh, now a unit of troops like Diamond Corps, uh, they have a three inch coherency. In other words, they need to be, they need to stay within three inches of one another at all times. So there we go. Uh, the Shattered Sword player is going to deploy uh, their unit of Sword Sworn next. Okay, so here we go. You need a sword sworn. All right. Uh, back to shattered sword. I mean, sorry, black diamond. Black diamond is going to deploy 
uh, their tank and I'm going to put the tank actually I'm going to put the tank here towards the bottom of the screen so that you can let me see if you can even see that where this is here and see my hand so it's a little bit beyond this point so I'm going to put the tank right here okay just so you can see the tank here's the tank uh, then I'm going to deploy the paragons and we're going to put the paragons uh, right here well that's I think that's closer than nine but here that's not okay so we're going to put the paragons right there um, and then finally uh, black diamond is going to deploy their knight uh, so I'm going to deploy my knight Magnus right there uh, and then finally we have Francis Mallory who is the knight for the shattered sword and the shattered sword knight is going to be uh, let's put him right here well yeah let's put him where he can actually see his cipher I don't, I don't know I like him kind of like him there how about that all right so uh, okay, so all units have been deployed. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and switch this over so that we can set up our activation queues. Okay, so this is kind of a mess right now. Let me clean this up a little bit. Take all the scenario cards out. All right, so in a 35 or a typical game, 50 point game, you would have you would use all three of your ready slots but this is a very short game so we're only going to be using uh, two of our ready slots so starting with the villain uh, the villain is going to set up their ready queue now uh, like if like you saw in deployment I made it a point to keep the knight and the cipher uh, within line of sight of one another so that they can gain uh, so that the knight can gain esper so I'm going to put the knight there in the first slot of the ready queue and let's put the uh, diamond cord in the second part of the ready queue um, oh you know what I totally forgot to use uh, Mallory's cadre ability let's go back over there real quick okay so uh, Mallory has a cadre ability that allows him to redeploy up to two of his troops after uh, the deployment is complete so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be extra sneaky here and I am going to put Can you see that back corner there? You can't. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put my two paragons back here. Yeah. So I'm going to put them back there. Uh, you can only see like kind of the feet of one. But there we go. I can redeploy a second unit. Uh, it doesn't look like I really want to redeploy a second unit. Uh, I think I'm pretty good uh, where things are at. So anyway, we're just that was his cadre ability. Let's go back to the uh, play mats here. So uh, with that said, we're going to go with Mallory, and we're going to go with the Paragons. All right. So with all that set. Now we're going to go ahead and do our uh, our opening our opening hand here. So uh, both players get to shuffle up here, and they're going to deal out cards. I'm going to show you the uh, Black Diamond's hand here. So they deal out five cards. Black Diamond obviously looking for that uh, chaos there. So the these cards are good. These three. I don't really need much blue in this list, so I'm going to discard the blue and I'll draw two more cards okay so there's the uh, black diamond hand I'm gonna put that right here and then we're going to okay so black diamond has their control hand ready to go we're gonna go ahead and deal out uh, uh, shattered swords so looking for blue mostly uh, and a little bit of green so there's five cards these are good cards. We're going to keep those. You can discard any or all of your cards on the initial draw. So I'm going to discard those three. And here we go. Three. And not a great opening hand for Shattered Sword. But that's okay. Because uh, we know that we're the hero. So we're going to get to go first. So 
Uh, that's going to be it for setup. It looks like we're just about ready to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with our game, and we will catch you on the next one.